independence, loyalty, grit, drive, qualities we took for granted in racing during my days behind the wheel. In this day and age, the game has changed. You'd be hard pressed to find a rig built out of plain old steel and bolts nowadays, or a driver out on the track just for the thrill of it. So, is there still a place for good old fashioned ingenuity and elbow grease out there? Well, tonight we've got a special program for you about a sensational and controversial household that lives and breathes racing. In fact, their name almost is racing. If you're a fan of motorsport, you may think you know about the racer family. Pops, mom, and mythically tragic Rex racer, his young brother Speed. Everyone's got an opinion about the racers, and until now, the racers have let the world keep on talking. They've steadfastly refused interviews and sponsorships and focused on what they do best, building and racing some of the most unique and amazing cars around. The Racer family's days behind the curtain are over, folks, because we've got a barn burner for you. A first ever glimpse inside the doors of the legendary Racer Motor. What makes them? What drives them? Where are they today and where are they headed? In the Racer family, we eat, drink, think, and breathe racing. We all love everything about cars. The smell of them, the taste of them. Getting your hands greasy. Watching them go, putting the rubber down on the road, uh, that's us, and we're, we're all about it. We always have been. Velocity is our business. My big brother, Speed, he built moles in the car. They're the first family of cars, and totally cool folks to boot. In one way or another, the racers have always been a part of racing in cars, since there were cars. The racer spirit goes back to a simpler time. There's never been a time when there wasn't someone by the name of Racer around the track. Like prodigal son Rex Racer. I, I guess when is just in the bloodline. And it's something we never get tired of though, right Pops? Hi Moms. Hey, Speed, this one's for you. World Championship. First place, first place, number one. At Racer Motors, we build custom cars. They're our babies. We work on these things down to the finest detail. You know, we're not a factory line like most of the majors. All the majors. It's the family thing, so I embrace it, and it's fun to watch them get so excited. Even the competition can't hide their admiration. There's a certain class and distinction that I think they bring to the game, you know? Well, those are uh, some of the best cars ever made in racing history. The racers are quiet and skilled when it comes to the driving arts. <laughs> oh, speed racer, yeah. Got the whole pickets. But not everyone's buying the milk and cookie act. Ooh, racer. Speed racer. I ain't losing any sleep over the kid, I tell you. What is it, speed racer and his poppy? Daddy working out of his garage? I mean, give me a break. There's no room for mom and pop organizations anymore. Love them or hate them, folks. They're part of the chase. They're the first family of racing, the last of the independents. Step into the winner's circle with the amazing Racer Family. It all begins here, just outside Cosmopolis. An unlikely nerve center for a world-renowned racing team, but a comfortable one at that. Oh boy, we go way back. My grandpappy, I guess, started it all. Rapid Ronnie Racer. He'd uh, pick up from the hills, deliver to the city, if you know what I mean. And then my dad, Pa, he got into the old demo derby circuit. Hell, wherever they were racing, he was there. I was always around cars. That's all I can remember being around, you know, scrounging for gaskets, pouring out cams. That was a golden age of racing. Those days are long gone. Man, those were drivers. Young Pop's race, brimming with ideas, set off in search of work. I went out on my own and, uh, well, found myself at Michida Motors and uh, finally worked my way up to the design table. He was good. Great engineer, very intuitive. 
We're getting into some uh, pretty new and I dare say revolutionary ideas with upfold and takes power cell management. Pops won Architect of the Year in 56, 57, and again in 58. That's a hat trick that's never been repeated. Pops' designs were fantastic. Greatest engineering I've ever known. But as Pops made his mark in the business, restlessness brewed within him. I don't even think my husband owns a tie. I don't think so. Simply put, Pops is in a suit. Well, I was just ready to grow up. That's how Racer Motors was born. Pops Racer holed up in his suburban garage with a few tools and a lifetime of know-how. I mean, I didn't need a lot of high-tech stuff like wind tunnels or computers, just my two hands with a wrench and some basic materials. Racer Motors cut a different path away from automated engineering, building every vehicle by hand in their home studio. I told him I was a big fan of the designs and of his work, and he showed me what he was working on. I mean, it was magical. Pops Racer is uh, not so much an engineer, more of an artist. And these cars are works of art. I felt like I'd gone 20, 30, 40 years into the future. I mean, it was essentially a space shuttle, um, only not in space. He's an artist, the Raphael of the road, the Michelangelo of motorsport. Pops Mach series has become a byword for car customization. I got to the point where my cars were definitely clearly a step above everybody else's. They take the Mach 1. Pops designed a notch set of carbon injectors that decrease the friction between the firing chambers and the cylinders. She was a thing of beauty, the Mach 1. We took her to the uh, Vanderbilt Cup with those darn hairpin turns. The driver, Digger Jones, he stripped that gearbox cleaner than Grandpa's gums. It takes a special human being to drive one of our cars. Got to the point with the evolution of my cars where we couldn't rely on uh, outside drivers anymore. And uh, we had to go in-house, literally. And that's where Rex came in. First-born son, Rex Racer, was tapped to drive the family rig. Drive. Brother, could he drive? He could do things with a car that, uh, there's, there's no one else that could do things that Rex could do. My speed was the same way. I don't think there was any way to keep him from it, really. Rex taught me everything I know about driving, but also about being a man, you know? He used to say that I was his good luck charm and he could never win any race without me on the sidelines cheering him on wearing my red socks. Here we are 12 years later. In a certain spirit, that guy, you know? No other way to put it. Whatever I did, you know, it was like he knew already what I wanted to do. So, just saw him from the back. This one I definitely attribute to my family, you know, moms, pops, speed, even, even Sparky. <laughs> I love you guys. But that love would be put to the test just weeks later, when Rex went from darling of the racing world to pariah. Rex Racer was accused of some very serious offenses, from dirty racing to race fixing. Let me tell you something about Rex Racer. Dirty. Dirty. He'll spear hook your tires, use laser cannons, you know, oil slicks, throw sand in your face, any dirty trick in the jam up your tracking systems, like dirty tricks, man, dirty. Rex wasn't racing dirty. It's just rumors. Rex never did any of that. I want this put on the record and don't do any of that funny editing. He never did any of those things. Rex Racer is implicated up to his ears. My brother was clean, period. I mean, you think otherwise, we can take it outside. Under a cloud of scandal, Rex Racer spiraled into decline. You know what? I don't race for racer motors anymore. All right, so ask someone else. And leave my family alone, okay? Leave them alone. That was the last time Rex Racer was seen in public. Biggest mistake of my life was telling him that I, I didn't care what he did. You know, if he left, he was never coming back. And, uh, well, that's something I'll always regret. I was only eight years old. You know, my brother walking out on my family. It's like the end of the world. The Crucible. Casa Cristo, 74. Rex Racer, now reduced to rally racing for Uniprime, enters Kirkala Caves in 13th place. He will never exit. 
race the world, lost a great one. Scandal or not. It was a dark day, poor spot, yeah. It was very tragic, I guess. And what did Speed, then just eight years old, make of the loss of his brother? That was a really hard time for Speed. Um, he just sort of got really quiet. He was my hero. When he died, I felt like I'd lost everything. It was a catastrophe, but it was more than that for us because when Rex died, for a while, it was like Pops died. After the crash, I questioned myself. I said, uh, well, there's got to be more important things to life than racing. And I shut it down and walked away. Pops shuttered Racer Motors and turned his back on the sport, focusing instead on his brood, which grew and grew. Spridal came along, and uh, I was perfectly happy spending my time, devoting my time to my family. And I didn't even think I'd put my hands on an engine or a convergenator again. They've always been so kind to everyone in the neighborhood. All the kids always knew that they could go to, to Mrs. Racer for anything. And, um, you know, like they pretty much adopted Sparky and me and you know, even Chim Chim, although he's a monkey. On a normal day, you know, you'll find us. Mom will be making our pancakes. Chim Chim will be running amok. Sprite will be chasing him. I mean, it's great times. It's great. Pops loves watching TV. The winner, Speed Racer. Pops can build anything. I mean, he's the one who originally sort of built me my helicopter. Trixie's really a spitfire, that girl. I like her a lot. She showed up one day for breakfast, and now she's here all the time. She's good for Speed, I think, and for the whole family. But what happened in the world of motorsport while the racers played house? The racing world really started to change, and many of the sponsors of the sport were able to push through new bylaws that relaxed regulations. Well, you had a lot of companies coming on the scene at that, that time, like Royalton, of course. Well, uh, uh, Royalton Industries is uh, an independent company. I own 143 companies outright, as well as having controlling interests in 100 more. Yeah, they came out with these monster cars that could do four or 500K top speeds. Changed the game. You don't feel the car anymore. So to me, it almost feels like I'm driving a toy. I personally miss the feel of a, a custom-made car. It's changed a thousand ways since the golden age. There was a time when there was a, there was a sense of nobility to it. You know, the drivers, we were, uh, we were like knights. It was real men driving real cars. For instance, if you drove with 200 miles an hour and you had to stop, then you really had to push the brake. And now you just do this and the car stops. I'm not so sure they even need a driver. So they're, they're so loaded with all these gadgets and doodads. Now the cars are so technologically advanced that really anyone can join the game. Any old Joe can uh, throw on a pirate's hat and uh, an eye patch and you know call himself uh, Sir Francis Brake, and he's got a career with the NC, you know, Captain Accelerator or something. And it's just it's not how it used to be. They're all uh, they're all about style. There's no substance anymore. And what about the racer family? Faded from prominence, living the life of leisure in the suburbs. Were they ever far from the game? My understanding of the situation was Pops needed some time to work things out. So did Mom and Speed. But as time went on, it began to dawn on me that Rex would have wanted me to do the thing that we both love doing, which is racing. So I uh, got back in the saddle. Speed and I just started catching races on television and then kind of sneaking down to Thunderhead. I was in a funny mood, I wanted to laugh. I tossed the kid the keys in my car and I said, go ahead, kid, take it out for a spin. The kid killed it. Never seen a kid drive like that. It was crazy. Racing press shutterbugs caught speed playing around at Thunderhead that night. It wouldn't be long before Pops Racer was jolted out of retirement with the news. Here I am doing everything in my power to keep the kid away from race cars and uh, sneaking around and find out he's raising hell for leather in some Echirosis tin can. I thought he was gonna ground me for life. He was mad at him, but, but you could tell that he was also kind of feeling something else as well. I mean, there'd been something missing in Pops for a long time. And uh, wow, when he saw that Speed could drive, the glint was back. I thought 
I wonder what excuse he's gonna give to open up the shop and start out all over again. I said to Speed, if I can't control you and keep you away from the track, the least I can do is put you in a vehicle I trust. We kind of laid down the law. I was like, what? What's he mean by this? You know, from that point on, you know, the cloud over the race and motor family had lifted. Pops went at the finishing details of the Mark V. You know, if you think he was about to all of a sudden design some rusty old, you know, retro toy, not a chance. As a matter of fact, I even grabbed a correspondence course in metallurgy while I was down. It frankly helped with some of the new alloys I've been cooking up. Once that egg hatched, Pops was ready. Racer Motors had fended off its greatest loss. They returned to the circuit with a new driver, Young Speed Racer. It's an intense experience, a lot of adrenaline. After you drive around in the Mach 5 for a long time, when you get out, you're so calm because it kind of takes all the adrenaline out of you. Speed isn't the most articulate person when it comes to uh, his passion for racing, but you know, you can see it when you watch it. Now, how can young speed racer brought up on a steady diet of cartoons, pancakes, and monkey business stand in the ring with my thoroughbreds? We train our drivers with the highest degree of precision available. They maintain a level of discipline higher than the world's greatest armies. This was actually the beginning of a new trend in the sport. Away from the small cohesive units towards these big corporate-driven mega teams. They came out of nowhere with huge industries behind them. Hydros, Atomic Injectable, Zoki, Yenshi. Nowadays you can't even sneeze without a sponsor. Three Roses, Mushamu, Metadias Rex, Zemper Fiber. Hey, look at the world. How many family teams with moms and pops are left? It's a joke. Thor Azim, Otosoro Moto. The list it goes on and on. Nowadays, sports is controlled by the sponsors. Everything is controlled by the sponsors. You want to know how racing works? Follow the money. Speed, another generation of racers on the road. Wow. Hey, hey. the kid's a whiz. He's a demon on wheels, a formidable opponent. He's the real deal, no doubt about it. I'd love to work with him. He did approach me, but uh, I just felt that Royalton had other priorities, you know? Cha-ching. My family is a victim of an elaborate conspiracy perpetrated by the corporate powers that be. I mean, he's a very good driver, but uh, at the end, I think he still can compete with me. Hope the family curse won't get the best of him. Not digging the scarf, and uh, personally, I prefer a more unified thematic presentation. The kid is great. Come on, he doesn't have the chops to make it in the circuit. Really and truly, I, I think you should change this whole documentary and just do it about me. Some of those drivers out there are pretty weird. And what does Spritel make of the competition? Bring him on. <laughs> The events of the last few years, it's making us stronger. And we got the boy out there now who is the best driver in the world, bar none. So bring it on. Bring it on. We're not afraid of your corporations because we're a family. If there is a family issue here, we'll deal with it now. We'll move forward in our great sport. And in a rare moment, our crew managed to corner the mysterious vigilante Racer X to ask him about the family. Here's what he had to say. There's something amazingly resilient about the Racer family. Yeah, listen, you can't keep the Racer family down twice. You know what I mean? We've been down once, now we're back. We have the big race coming up, but um, I know he'll do great. Uh, proud is the word of it. He's the fastest little weasel out there. He's got racing in his blood. Yeah, I don't want him to get a big head. Or... Yeah, I'm proud of him. Speed racer, what are you thinking? I just want to get out there 
and do what I love to do, you know, what my brother loved to do and my father as well. Racing cars, plain and simple. <laughs> What a family. Speed Racer sits on the doorstep of history, carrying the weight of generations on his shoulders. Can he rise to greatness? Or will he be doomed by the curse that felled his older brother? We'll all be glued to our seats to find out. Thanks for watching, folks. Speed Racer has completely changed the equation. I think it's going to be a very different movie than anything people have really ever seen before, especially in the family film genre. The Wachowski brothers said to me one day how they made all these great films and that they always were disturbed that their nieces and their nephews could never see their movies. It's incredible what they're doing, taking the best elements of a cartoon to make a live action film. They're fascinated by the whole world that Speed Racer produces. It's just so different and fresh, and I think they're perfect for it. I hope that it's going to be considered a groundbreaking film, because I think that that's really what the Wachowskis are doing. Keeping what was the essence of Speed Racer, but taking it into the whole new millennium. Go, Speed, go! I can't wait. Racing's everything. For my family, it isn't just a sport. It's way more important than that. It's like a religion. They eat, drink, think, and breathe racing. I mean, their last name is Racer. The reality of the world that they live in, it's sort of car-obsessed and racing-obsessed. It's a little different culture than we've ever seen before. It's kind of a retro future. It's a truly a car culture. The Racer family's business has definitely incorporated right into their house. I mean, you can see the cars right from the living room, and the whole family is interested in this business that Pop has of designing cars and building cars. It's their heart and soul. It's what is handed down through the generations. I mean, his brother did it, his father did it, and his father builds the cars. So I'm a dinosaur in those respects. I'm a throwback. I'm a, a nuts and bolts guy. When I watch you do some of the things you do, <laughs> you just take my breath away. I am so proud to be your mom. Speed Racer, what are you thinking? The way the story goes is Speed is surrounded by a whole family and they're a very tight-knit unit and it's kind of mirrored with the bad guys who don't care about the values that aren't defined by money and that is what the Racer family is all about. You walk away from me, you walk away from this deal, no matter how well you drive, you won't even finish the race. He's just trying to scare you, son. What are we gonna do? It's about Speed having the choice of entering into the professional racing level and being tempted by a gigantic race team that would ultimately be controlled by some massive conglomerate and ultimately being corrupted by that. Someone's trying to crush everything in my life that matters to me. So it's, it's the power struggle between Speed trying to do the right thing versus these corporate guys who just want to control him. And since he won't be controlled, do everything they can to destroy him and to stop him. Are you ready to become a real race car driver? Then sign that contract! Larry and Andy said that in certain senses it was like a Capra movie. Uh, in the sense of the small family being against the huge corporation. You walk away from me, you walk away from this deal, no matter how well you drive, you won't win, you won't place. I guarantee you right now, you won't even finish the race. He's just trying to scare you, son. What you do behind the wheel of a race car has nothing to do with business. This is kind of the car version of the mom and pop diner that has been in existence for years and years and now. You know, they're being offered a huge sum of money to sell out, will they or won't they? Stop him, stop him now. 
Larry and Andy obviously have a, a very intense theme running with that, and that is this theme of corporate globalization and domination of the individual. Do you think you can drive a car and change the world? It doesn't work like that. Maybe not, but it's the only thing I know how to do when I gotta do something. Pops and Mrs. Racer have already lost one son to racing under dark, dire circumstances. They don't want to lose another one. This isn't a game. These people play rough. That's why I'm going with you. Speed's relationship with Trixie is funny. You know, they met when they were 10 years old, and they've been going out for 10, 11 years. They love each other a lot, but they're also best friends. Move it, Speed. It's getting ugly out there. She has her own helicopter, the TRX, and she sort of spots for him. So she'll be up in the helicopter over the course and sort of see what's coming up ahead and warn him. She's a part of the team, as everybody is. Even Spridal and Chim Chim, you know, they come in and they save the day. Was it my age? Oh, no. It was his. The only way you'll ever stop these people is to bring them to justice. You know, the interesting thing about Racer X is that he's working for this organization that is trying to stop corruption, and there's life and death at stake for a lot of people that he not be revealed who he is. He's going to be very good. No, he's going to be the best if they don't destroy him first. The kind of cars you're going to see in this movie are so far and above the concept cars of this day. I mean, they're going to blow people away. Cars were central characters within the film, and that we were in a world that was fascinated with cars. Where in our world we have architects, in the speed racer world we have architects. Everyone has a design of vehicle that is, is almost like the clothes they wear. Each car is different. Each car is a personality. In total, we've probably designed in excess of 100 cars. It just totally represents their individuality, and everything looks super cool. And of course, the Wachowskis are geniuses. Their imaginations are so boundless, and it's great that this time it's more accessible for kids and for family going. They love to break the mold. They love to push the envelope. They want to go beyond what you've seen before. They want to do that. And they made some really extraordinary fighting sequences when the Matrix films were done, and Kafu is that taken to another level, but with cars. These are some of the most dangerous drivers in the world. Their cars will probably be equipped with secret weapons. So we've modified the Mark V to try to counter their attacks. You know, it takes place in a world that's obsessed by acrobatic, combative car racing. The cars fight each other and hit each other, and it's very hard and aggressive. And... They wanted a form of stunt racing, some mix of skateboarding, extreme sports. All of those combined into a, a multinational hyper event. Then, you know, like the tracks themselves, they're all such different races in such different environments. What I imagine these race sequences are going to look like, you can't have all this crazy stuff happening on the track and then drop in and have an actor that's just like, like he's sitting in a car in a Mercedes going down the Autobahn at 90. You know, I mean, it's like, it's got to look pretty intense inside those cockpits. They brought in video game designers to model whole racetracks after the concepts that the Wachowskis had. The guy who moves the gimbal, he plays a video game. So he's just like this in a little seat. He's going on the actual track that he's supposed to be racing. And then the gimbal would respond to that. It's a very kind of organic experience. There's not a whole lot of needing to act in the gimbal. I mean, you're really getting thrown around. We spent time incorporating a full driving simulator into the setup that we had. Heads up. And we can give control in the steering wheel to the actor in the car, in the cockpit, and the pedals. And they can literally steer and drive and accelerate, and the base will respond. And so they can feel like they're actually driving the machine instead, instead of uh, being driven. Wing left. There were sequences where Racer X was just like knocking the crap out of cars on both sides of them. And you want to make sure that when you do that, that you get a lot of that. <laughs> Larry and Andy have done a really great job of informing all of the actors about what they're going to actually be seeing on the green screen. Hi. 
definitely a big learning curve with green screen. I'm so used to being in natural environments and being on location and, and, and actually seeing the surroundings. They'll take pictures of real things around the world and they'll plug it into the computer as the background. So what you're gonna have is it's two-sale animation with 3D objects moving on the 2D plane. The idea is to take like the basic tenets of what like a cartoon was and to apply it into a 3D filmic environment. The first thing people are gonna get about Speed Racer is that it's nothing like The Matrix at all. People get a little wary when they hear you're making a movie out of a cartoon, but the approach they're taking is so different than the sort of normal approach. <sighs> It's a different kind of place. It's, it's the world that we know, but it's not. It has, for the Wachowskis, a much different feel. It feels more magical than sci-fi. I don't know that I have the words to describe it. It's like human anime. So it's very much like an anime style of film, but it's all live action. Everything is photographically real. We're trying to show people something they've never seen before. Speed, get out of there! I can't! I can't move! Speed! Go! That's my boy! Speed Racer is back! Hubba hubba! Ooh!